Well, well, well. Let's see, what have we got here? Trying to go live at the moment. Hopefully we're there. So what you're seeing right now is obviously what's running in my background all over this screen, which is, well, it's YouTube. Can I be heard all right is the question. Hope I can be heard all right. Making it up as I go. Hmm. You there, Jelly Balls? Are we working? Trying to go live at the moment. Hopefully we're there. I think we're working. I think we're working. Just set up my top chats, because I only have one screen to work with here, so I'm going to make it up as I go. Close off the tabs I don't need. Alright, cool. We're live. How's it going, everyone? We're good. I hope we're all good. Hey there, Ghost, Christopher, Pete Miller, Jekazol. Yeah, cool. You mentioned a goddess called Maka. Am I a goddess? I'm sure a goddess would sound much more beautiful than I do. So obviously running a bit of um bit of GW in the background here. Uh hopefully you all enjoy looking at it. Uh I've put it up so that we can, you know, if we want to talk hobby, I can go onto either GW or Forge World's pages and we can just go through and uh if we want to talk about anything particular we can go have a look, that kind of thing. So yeah. Hi everyone. How's everyone's day been? It's been uh, absolutely boiling hot here. Uh, well into the 40s it got to in my part of the town. And um, yeah, that's over 100 Fahrenheit. Well over 100 Fahrenheit, in fact. Uh, but it's starting to cool down now, which is good. I've got the window open behind me and uh, it's letting in a bajillion flies, but such is life, eh? The stream software, though, is kind of a pain in the ass because it's showing me uh, my entire laptop background, which um, I've got OBS running in the background of at the moment, which will give you this really trippy view uh, in order to actually do the stream because uh, let's just say this wasn't well thought ahead, shall we? Uh, and hello, China, all the way back from uh, Australia. So guys, what do you all want to talk about? Ask questions, ask away. We're just here to relax today. What's the ability to justify spending £35 for five models when I can go to Warlord and spend £20 for 30 to 50 models? Yeah, uh, that's pretty understandable. Uh, I think the only reason I've really stuck with Games Workshop in general is because... Uh, Games Workshop has, they have a really great background universe, and that's what draws me in. I'm not really worried about the quality per se of the miniatures, uh, as opposed to the quality of the background, which is why I got into like Chronicles of Hate. Minus two, where Jelly Balls is, yeah. Uh, it's uh, like that, well, <laughs> it was that uh, cold here about three months ago, but uh, it turns around fast in Australia. Thoughts on the new Age of Sigma Ether War box set? Okay, let's go have a look at it, because it should be up uh, on their web store. 
Uh, that's the one with the Zench and Caradon Overlords, isn't it? Are they under available to order, or are they just being previewed on the Warhammer Community page? Probably just previewed on Warhammer Community. A lot of questions coming through thick and fast, so give me a second to get through them. Uh, while I'm waiting for Warhammer Community to load up, because this is running off uh, Google Chrome, which I don't normally use, I'm more of a Firefox guy. Uh, we can look at the Aether War. Uh, yeah, there are plenty of Tau models. Most of the Tau range at Forgewood I like, actually. I think Tau have stuck very true to their original design aesthetic. Uh, whereas if you look at something like, oh, I don't know, uh, Space Marines or Chaos Space Marines, there's a lot of variants over time and a lot of units that are quote-unquote meant to be from the same uh, design background sort of end up looking vastly different. Uh, rapiers with laser destroyer rays, yeah, they're uh, worth it, but you got to pick wisely what you shoot them at. Uh, they're probably not as good as a laser vindicator, but a laser vindicator takes up a heavy slot, whereas the rapiers don't. Should you paint Alpha Legion, other Legion special units in Alpha Legion colours, or its Legion colours? Uh, I'd just paint them in Alpha Legion colours. They just pinch the best and brightest ideas of other people. Right, uh, Aether Wars, yes, yeah, so I'm not a fan of the Caradon Overlords, I just think it's a bit stupid as a concept, uh, I think if Caradon Overlords were more of a steampunk vibe, like a natural evolution of the idea of dwarves having like that steam technology with like gyrocopters, that kind of thing in old Warhammer fantasy, that would have worked better. But the fact these guys have these really weird 20,000 under the leagues, uh, sorry, 20,000 leagues under the sea style um, blimps powered by ether gold, quote unquote, that's a bit dumb. So, you know, I just don't like it from that point of view, the Caradons. Uh, the Zench part looks fine. I really like this new little Herald chap floating around on the disc. Uh, I don't know if they've got a close up of him or not. Uh, Zench Endless Spells, yeah, that's fine. I think if Zinch is the sort of guy that should have Zinch, as some people say, I don't even know if there is a correct pronunciation. Uh, yeah, he's the kind of guy that would obviously want um, spells. That's what I'm getting at. Sorry. Uh, all right. Do I think HH being played competitive rather as narrative? I uh, don't. None of Games Workshop's games are designed to be competitive. They're way too randomised. Uh, way too poorly balanced because they're way too big and sprawling. Uh, DCP, uh, Discord's holding up great. I obviously don't get on it too much apart from playing games with like Tim, um, a couple of boys from Eye of Horus uh, podcast, but I'm happy to play games. If I'm playing like a multiplayer game, people jump on. I'm happy to play with other people. It doesn't phase me. Uh, you just got to catch me at the right time because my shift hours are pretty weird, so... Um, not always playing when the other Australians are. Uh, do I think Games Workshop will ever drop prices? I think you'd have more chance of me giving a thumbs up to every product they release this year than them drop prices. So there's that. Uh, yeah, so back to the Ether War. I'm. I don't know. It also depends on what price point this comes in at. This comes in at like 150 bucks, like a stark looking box, so it's going to be great value. This comes in at like 200 and something bucks, very questionable. Uh, plus, this is not really the core of a Zench army, or the old school Zench army. Uh, there's no horrors, anything like that. You want those brimstone horrors, you want those tar pits, that kind of thing. This, as it stands, is a couple of uh, Zangors on discs and a couple of Screamers. That's not really enough. Uh, Seems like a very bizarre choice of what to put in a sort of getting started Age of Sigma box of some description. Um, whereas something like the Night Haunt Stormcast Eternal starter box is great because it's like you can pick that up and you, you've already got your foot in the door, then yeah, that's great. But this, not so much. You're definitely going to have to add a lot to this. Uh, I'm guessing this plus a star collecting box at the very least. 
Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I did notice the Iron Hands Contemptor was re-released, Jesse Johansson. Um, it was good of them. It was good of them. There's a lot of other stuff that needs bringing back, but um, points to them for getting that one right. I think that's fair to say, is it not? Uh, if I head on over to Forge World, we can even go bask in its glory. Is there any future for non-Primaris Marines? Ooh, that's a tough question. Uh, so right now, I can't think of what the actual last Marine, regular Marine, uh, that's not a Primaris release actually was. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess it was Rabute Gilliman himself was the last regular Marine that was released, and he's a Primarch, so... Yeah... Uh, I think they'll just, until the moulds get worn out and they have to retire them, they'll just keep producing regular space marines, but they won't do much with them, I don't think. Do you think one day the HH reigns will go with Xenos, like Orcs, Eldar? Uh, that's a tough one. The community's already done some great uh, codexes or um, books, as it were, for those, like Hollis as an Eldar list, um, which is great for playing in Heresy Era. I don't see Forge World doing it though, because they're really putting in the bare minimum now, as opposed to uh, all the effort they used to put in when Alan Pye was still alive. Because Forge World is running like 20 concurrent projects at once. Uh, they got a bit of uh, attention deficit disorder, we'll say. From Aris Marines, Elf Legion Conspiracy or nah? Nah, they're um, way less original than that. <laughs> I, I'm fine with the idea of, I think if you've got 7th edition codexes and you want to play games against uh, Horus Heresy armies, do so. Don't use like formations, data slates, detachments, that kind of thing. Um, but instead run them uh, using Heresy Force Org charts. So like, yeah three HQ options, four elite options, that kind of thing. Uh, you want to focus your battles around that two to three thousand point area, that kind of thing. Um, there are obviously tweaks that need to be made, new units added though. Yeah, I, I could definitely see this Ether War box coming in at two to three hundred Australian dollars, uh, which would be a real shame because it's not worth that much. And I don't just say that like financially it's not worth that much. I mean, it's not worth that much to the player. There's not that many players I know who would want to pay that much for this box. Um, you know, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's just me. I don't know that I see Forge World trying to move away from the heresy very soon, Boric. Um, But it's more just they've got so much on they're putting so very, very little time into the heresy. Ooh, okay. $140 of Skywarns, $120 of Enlightened, before you had the hero screen with a little ship. Yeah, well, uh, when you make a box like this, is what they call a loss leader, so you normally would drop the price of this box in order to sell it, uh, sell more of it, make a higher perceived value, that kind of thing. Um, you're still going to make a profit, you're just cutting out a lot of the margin on it. Scatter Dice asks, what is the ugliest, most stupid model release for 2019 according to you? Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck my ass. Um, that's... Oh, that's really hard. Was that uh, Spear Chap that works with Abaddon this year? Because he's pretty dumb looking. Uh, his jetpack and that is actually wider than his body, so that's kind of funny. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What are some of the newer things released this year that I could complain about uh, if I had to pick a bad model? I do apologize if I can't keep up with the chat. I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can without forcing people to use the super chat and pay money like other channels do. I'm trying to get to everyone's questions as best I can. 
Um, look, Warcry's got some nice stuff. The Endless Spells, there's some weird ones in there. Yeah, I don't know that there's really been that many bad miniatures released this year. I think there's a lot of questionable releases, perhaps. Probably, I'd, I'd probably actually say the uh, Primaris stuff is probably the worst stuff they released this year. Trying to think of the best way to find it all. Uh, let's just go Space Marines. Where are we? This is good because I can go off on a complete tangent here. I was going to make into its own video if people don't mind. So um, when I look at the releases this year, let's talk about... Okay, so the Invicta Tactical Warsuit's bad. Why? Because the whole idea of a Dreadnought Walker was you had to take a person who's pretty much dead... Um, crack open their skull, put a bunch of cables into it, you know, what's left of their body, hook it up to these nutrient sacks, and, you know, it's slowly killing them to run the Dreadnought, and they'll be in the Dreadnought till they die, which they pretty much are already comatose at the point they're put in it anyway. Well, if you can just make a tactical war suit like this Invicta bullshit, and just strap a Marine into essentially a Dreadnought, you've functionally defeated the purpose of having Dreadnoughts, and it also raises the question at the same time of, why don't you give everyone one of those suits? Because it looks like it'll be a major force multiplier. Um, Repulsor Executioner. So Primaris tanks in general suffer from the fact that they're all uh, over the top because they're digitally sculpted. And I think digital sculpting is a great tool. I just want to make that clear. But if you're designing something like this uh, Repulsor Executioner, okay, uh, give the chance to load it up. I do apologize because I'm using so much bandwidth at the moment. Uh, if you're designing the Primaris Repulsor Executioner and this vehicle is being done manually, like you're hand sculpting it with putty, you're not going to go and add all these extra like little uh, rocket launches and things like that um, floating around the sides of the thing because... Um, it's a lot of extra work. You've got to actually sit there, you've got to sculpt it. Same with like this weird, you know, cannon on the front, this giant Gatling cannon, the dude who's actually running it on top. It's a lot of extra work to sculpt. So you generally won't do it. Same with like the little mini turrets sticking out the back and this absolute heavy stubble lob they've got at the moment. Uh, but because we're digitally sculpting it, we have all these assets already. We design them for something else. We just click and drag them over and we place them on there. We basically just cut and paste the features on, resize it appropriately, add it into the existing wire framework model. So, great. Problem with this is you end up with a bit of an eyesore and an overload where you think this actually has as many guns in the turret, a turret that's barely bigger than a Predator turret, as a Bane Blade tank does which is obviously twice the size of this tank. So you end up with an absolute bloated, overloaded uh, monstrosity. Now, if you are designing a game, and, you know, forgive me for this tangent, guys, if you're designing a game and you've got a Land Raider in one hand and you've got the Primaris Repulsor Executioner in the other, what do the two do? Well, the Executioner is going to be able to leap over terrain as opposed to having to plough through it or go around it. So it's got a massive mobility edge. Okay, so that's key. Uh, they're both transports, so that's in neither one of their favour. So what would a ground tank offer that an aerial tank doesn't? And think of any computer game you might have played. Now, the answer in my mind is a ground-based tank should probably have heavier armor and heavier firepower, and that's the trade-off for having much, much less mobility. Okay? And to an extent, in gameplay terms, the Land Raider does have better armor. I think it's a 2-plus save versus a 3-plus save on the Executioner. Um, but the Executioner is functionally a far more firepower than a Land Raider, although it does help Land Raiders now have twin-linked glass cannons firing two shots each on each side, which is, you know, strong. So what you've ended up here with is basically one option is now functionally better than the other. 
because there's no negative drawbacks to taking it. Um, this happens a lot in 8th edition 40k, and it's also happening in things like Age of Sigma. So a great example in Age of Sigma is the uh, the Bonecast Eternals, uh, the Assyriac or Ossiarch, something like that, Ossiarch Reapers. Um, we'll go have a look at that range because we can. Uh, the Ossiarch Reapers are one of these weird armies where um, everything is functionally better basically than everyone else so what do they do they do horde really well uh the basic mortec guard are fantastic uh, if you played against them they're really really tanky and they've got this shield ball special rule and they're, they're just strong and then it's like okay they're cavalry it's nothing to write home about but they're as competitive as anyone else's basic cavalry the liege cavalos great uh, the Gothazar Harvester, surprisingly strong. Uh, the Mortec Crawler, aka the Not Screaming Skull Catapult, ridiculously broken. Uh, if you take the battalions of them and you've got two of these things firing. So rather than having a faction which has an obvious downside, like, oh, okay, it's, it's super tanky, uh, it's really strong in close combat, what's bad about them? Well, they don't have the best mobility. And that's basically it. So that's a, a hallmark of poor game design. And if I'm here complaining about this faction, because uh, I have played against them, including Catacross played against him in the 2000 point game, uh, they have not command points. They have their own special snowflake thing. And the guy I was playing against, really nice guy, had so many of these points, he was just handing them out like candy, and there is nothing you can do to stop them, deny them, anything like that. And almost the whole army was like hitting on twos, wounding on threes, um, often with re rolls and like sixes to hit were generating extra hits. It was just insanity. And I was running Night Haunt, which are known as a pretty competitive, strong army. And I really struggled if it wasn't for being an objective game, me hogging the objectives uh, early on and scoring continuous points all game. I'd have guaranteed uh, be in a lot of trouble there. Um, the only thing that kept me alive was I got as many of their characters killed as early as possible. But it was still really difficult. And uh, even the people playing these guys are like, yeah, they're overpowered. So the moral of the story here is um, it started out as a tangent on bad models and we've gone off on a completely different tangent of basic game design. Hope it was riveting for everyone. The 2020 model of the year checklist. Oh yeah, where's that at? I'm guessing, is it on uh, Warhammer Community or something? Maybe, I don't know. I'd like to find out. Jeffrey Higgins here for the weekly main off. Uh, yeah, sure. Is that an auto can turret on top or just a wonky ball? I think it's just a wonky uh, not bolter. I don't know. Yeah, repulsor is a slow land speed with transport capacity and a heap of armor. Uh, Games Workshop did make another factory for plastic models. Ghost. Uh, Forge won't shift to plastic. Well, of course they won't shift to plastic because they're not about volume. They're about... Uh, well, they're about low volume. Low volume is easy done with resin. You just make molds out of silicon. You don't have to sit there and uh, create expensive dyes. It's quite the process. Uh, I do have a video planned to actually show you uh, from an old white dwarf how they actually did the sculpt and the dyes on the original uh, Eldar Falcon grav tank in the late 90s. Do I think the Legion Aquita Bombard was modelled to justify the Death Guard's Plague Burst Crawler? I have heard that it was done by a sculptor who was just practising and they were, came along basically and said, that looks really good, let's make it a thing. Uh, apparently the sculptor was just practising designing tanks uh, in their digital program, whichever one they're using, ZBrush or something, and then yeah, the hierarchy came along and went, oh, what's that you're working on? That looks really good. Let's, yeah, let's fucking make it a model. Uh, as for size, it's much bigger than the Playburst Crawler, if I'm guessing correctly, based on the size of like the ladders and that on the size. It looks like it's a 
uh, Sikoran hull, full-size Sikoran hull pointing backwards that it's based on. Um, whereas the Plague Burst Crawler is really only a bit bigger than a Rhino. Uh, as for the fact is, in their own fluff, they say that Mortarian uh, designed the Plague Burst Crawler on his own. It's a very much post-heresy thing. That's why only the Death Guard have it. He made it specially for them. That's probably worth keeping in mind. Um, the fluff is very contradictory at the moment, coming out of GW. Uh, a great example of that is with the Primaris Marines and the fact that Blood Angels have the Red Thirst and uh, Black Rage, even though apparently being Primaris cures all your Gene C fours, and that was a big talking point of early Primaris. I do have the feeling, though, that the Riders, uh, well, for a start, the writers don't know any more than you do. Silly as that sounds, they're just authors. Authors haven't read all the books in a range. They might have read some books that are relevant to what they're working on. They might talk with other writers. This is true. But generally, you know better than they do because you're really in depth on it. You're studying the law, that kind of thing. You, you know, you're really into it. Whereas the uh, writers are not necessarily uh, anywhere near as into it as you are. And so they make mistakes. You get guys like C.S. Godo, uh, quite famously has rhinos turning from rhinos into razorbacks from scene to scene, marine tanks armed with multi-lasers, uh, Eldar ditching their grav tanks to drive marine tanks, that kind of dumb shit. Like, this is all stuff that happened. And you can't say it's canon or anything like that just because an author did it. And I think these authors are in the position now where... Um, where when they're trying to come up with good fluff and a reason uh, to make the chapters different, because obviously if everyone's flawless and everyone's trained the same way, you're just going to end up with a galaxy full of ultramarines. Well, in order to make them different, they have to add those bits of character that are unique to their specific legions in. So, yeah. Uh, Nana Rivers, oh, the Syriac Bone Reaper's expensive as fuck. Uh... They can be, they can have a low model count, but you can actually fit quite a lot into the points if you want. Uh, the guy I played in 2000 points had uh, five of the cavalry, uh, I'm still there, he had uh, the entire Syriac Bone Reapers uh, pre-order bundle here. This thing, yeah, he had that entire thing on the battlefield, minus the uh, Arch Cavalos, basically. Uh, and a bunch of extra Mortec Guard. And he had an extra three of the uh, Necropolis Stalkers in 2,000 points. Which was pretty much equal numbers, if not greater, than my Nighthorn had. Just to give you an idea. So, yeah, they're, they're expensive, I guess. But for what they offer, they're really good. Rob749, uh, what scale of game do you think the current edition works best at? 1500 points or something else? I really can't give you an accurate answer for 8th edition. For Heresy, um, because the game's a lot tighter, the restrictions allowed, uh, about 3000 points is the perfect sort of large game, and uh, about 1200 points is only Mortalis. Uh, the difference with 40k is that because stratagem farming and command point farming is such a huge deal, uh, the disparity you could get between two factions because of that factor means that I can't really honestly give you an answer as to what I think is the better game size. Uh, for Age of Sigmar, I think 2,000 points is really nice, and I think 1,500 is really nice. I think once you start going below that, it's basically like one lucky combat or something. We'll see you just start steamrolling through the other guy's army. Thramus Crusade Plastic Box with the release of Book 9. Huh, you're dreaming. <laughs> what else have we got here? Sorry, I was just checking through the different chats. Will drive and my wife's son loves Age of... Yeah, there's nothing wrong with loving Age of Sigma. 
Um, it's by far a better game than 8th edition 40k, probably because of the fact that apart from Ossiarch Bone Reapers, you don't really have anywhere near as many of the command points available. You're only generating one per turn, and unless you have a really special character who might generate an extra one, uh, it's not really a big deal. And I, like I said, I play Nighthorn, which means that I have access to stealing uh, said command point. <laughs> so, uh, thanks to Kurtos Valentian, the Craven King, which is a great model. I love the whole Nighthorn range, actually. Not often I get to say that, where I'm... Um, I look at a range and I'm like, oh, this whole thing is great. Uh, jelly balls? No, we won't get an Omicron sculpt. Uh, we'd be lucky to get a car on bike sculpt at the rate four drill goes. Uh, do I see a solution to the command point farming problem? Problem 749. Yes, I do. Make it a flat number. Give them three command points or something at the start of the game and say, that's it. That's all you get. Good luck with it. Um... Maybe if they bring someone like Gilliman along or something, maybe they'll have a thing where it's like, roll a dice on a 4+, plus. you don't actually spend the command point. Uh, he can do that once per turn. Something like that would be a great way to curb it. So for Bear, I can't tell if Forge will slowly bring back Horus Harris releases or slowly giving up. Uh, hmm. Tough one. I, I'd say they're they're just coasting along. <laughs> uh, it's like when you're at work and it's 20 minutes before you knock off and it's sort of like you just start dragging out the task at the end of the day just to look busy because you just can't be fucked and you want to go home. I'd say it's about that. I don't want Nick Kime to continue his 40k Salamander's books. There's a librarian who cut apart a battle pass. For... Yeah, I have Nick Kime's Salamander's books in 30k are bad as well. <laughs> Fucking lose is terrible. There's some, there's some dumb stuff out there by authors, guys. Despite of what I say on the channel, don't think that the authors or the company know better than you, because they're just people at the end of the day. And look at something like Fallout 76 if you're into computer games. Like Bethesda, giant publisher, should know a lot better than just some hacky boy on the internet, and yet uh, time has proven that very wrong. How do I feel about... The reselling of the 6-7 starter box. Ah, uh, totally fine with it. A lot of the models in that box, the only way you can get them is in that box. Uh, the quote-unquote, I guess you would say, easy to build, um, easy to build, um, what do you call it? Terminators? Yeah, that's the word I'm waiting for. The Dark Angels Terminators and the uh, Chaos Chosen, pretty much both are only available in that box. So, yeah, kind of a big deal. That's something that'll be fun for me to scroll through in the background here is I'll go into the made to uh, order, or available to order section, just so I can have a look at what's in there. Because it's a pretty impressive section. It's freaking huge. And it's basically saying that this is all the shit they are only making when they have enough orders for it as opposed to having it on the shelf. Yeah, my antivirus is giving me warnings because this subscription is about to subside. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a lot of stuff. Quite a lot of stuff. What do I think the line will be like once he comes out? Do I have any ideas of what kind of buffs he should bring? I think he should be a cross basically between uh, Weeman, Russ, and Rebude Gilliman for 30k. So Gilman has a lot of passive buffs he can give his army. Um, you, you can declare each turn, that kind of thing. Whereas Russ is quite a combat monster. And as we know, the line uh, beat the Russ in both a sword fight and in a fist fight. I mean, granted, Russ turned around, he got sucker punched in the fist fight, but uh, hey, two Primarchs fought that day, only one walked away. So, stiff shit. Do I reckon this is turning a Game the game into a card game. I think it has the potential to do it right. Warcry seems to be the right track. Okay, the problem is Warcry only has a few units to deal with. 40k or 30k. Okay, so look at this. This is just the made to order range right now. This is something like 700 products nearly. No, 821 products here. 
you know, just assorted miniatures that, yeah, they use them in both game systems, you know, that kind of thing. They can't keep this stuff in stock on the shelves. They have to actually make it specifically in limited batch runs because they don't have enough molds, uh, well, machines to put the molds in to keep them all constantly in production. So, um, imagine trying to make a card game keeping track of the shit. I mean, they're releasing day one FAQs, like a broken video game. They're releasing day one patches for their codexes. And you can't just go and buy a codex or a uh, battle scroll, um, war scroll, whatever they're called for Age of Sigma. You can't just go get those things and play straight out the book because chances are a bunch of things in it are wrong. So you're going to have to print out FAQs or cross-reference or check new character cards. They can't update something they've already printed. They don't update the ebooks. This is a problem. So I don't really see the card game aspect working unless they get all the cards into a great place, which they don't when they print them off. How do you even start Horus Heresy? Which books do you need to play? And at the moment, the latest version of the game. Uh, if you go onto the Outer Circle page you'll and you go to getting started in Horus Heresy playlist, you go into playlist, you'll see it there. That basically goes in sequential order, the things you need to get into the game. If you go back to the earliest videos, which are probably all full of background noise and stuff, um, you'll see that I talk about the game itself and these are the books you need to buy in order to play the game. Everything's there. That's why I've built the playlist that way. It's designed for someone who has no idea about it to go, click on the playlist, and if they watch it through in order, they'll understand. No, Hunting Freeman, you can't get the cultists out of that box anywhere else. It really is uh, the gift that keeps on giving. I'm trying to scroll down my mouse wheel on this page, and it keeps jolting back up for some reason. I don't know why, but it's very annoying. Uh, what do I expect from the promise of Forge World? They finally finished the Horus Heresy. So Forge World said back when Alan Bly was alive, they want to run all the way through into the scouring. They imagine like 20, 30 books, uh, the big black books. I don't see that happening. And if they release them at the rate they've been releasing current books, I will be 60 years old by the time they're done. I don't see me doing this still at 60. I'll be surprised if I'm still able to do it in my 40s. Do Night Lords players always have daddy issues, or just me? Uh, I don't know you well enough to answer that question. I wonder if the line will be posed like the artwork of him fighting Kurz, laughing cheese says. Uh, no, probably not. He'll he'll have nothing to do with Kurz, I dare say. Um, it's a bit late to sort of retroactively turn them into a duel, uh, like Magnus and Russ or Ferris and Fulgrim, because they weren't designed at the same time as each other. Uh, my audio sounds like a robot. Uh, how do you know I'm not a robot? Fordwell getting rid of Legion specific chess pieces is stopping me from making a White Scars army. Uh, I would never suggest going to Uncle Mao as a solution. Remember that mini 8th edition rulebook they published a short while ago? Those lazy bastards ripped out the fluff and did not update the rule wording from the FAQs, etc. Yeah, they do that a lot. Um, a lot of, so take the black book, uh, book 8 from Forgeville, the latest one with Blood Angels and White Scars. They cut pasted the Rites of War, for example, from book 6 of the Horus Heresy. And didn't update them to include all the new units that they added. So, for example, in White Scars, you can't have a commander on a uh, Shamshir jet bike. You can only have him on a Scimitar jet bike. And because the Khan himself, Jagadai Khan, has a bike called Moon Dragon, and it's a special bike, not a Scimitar, he can't head a White Scars bike army either because they just cut pasted the existing rules they wrote four years ago because they're lazy, or they're bad at editing. Uh, speaking of finishing the Horus Heresy, what would you imagine an Emperor model would play like? Uh, take Horus. Now add Magnus's 
rules to Horace's rules. And that will get you in the ballpark, I think. Uh, Dark Dragon Solution for command points. Uh, one command point for each 500 points from the name time. Yeah, something like that would be pretty good. Jelly Balls. Best looking Primark. Ooh, tough one. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look, shall we? Uh, Dawn's nice, but a bit static. Magnus is nice. Uh, Alpharius is really good. Potoro is okay. Fulgrim's actually pretty nice to handle in flesh. Sanguinius, I'm not a huge fan of the model, believe it or not. I really like Angrom, maybe just because he was the first. And he's a lot different to the other ones that came later. Uh, I guess, I guess, Horus. The OG, the big dog, he's he's the best looking one. <laughs> I have way too much emotion to be a robot. Um, isn't the latest Terminator movie Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, the T eight hundred has like a family and stuff, so you know robots can have emotions. What about um, you know Roy Batty and Blade Runner? Robots can feel. I mean, David in Prometheus and Alien Covenant, he will do the fingering. Have I ever had a hobby slump, Exile DCC? How do I pull myself out of it? Ooh, yeah, I get them all the time, actually. I basically force feed myself miniature painting. Uh, horrible as that sounds. So often I just put on a show I like on my laptop, which is next to my painting table. And I just have a show going in the background. I just force myself to sit down and just go, okay, what do I need to do on this model? Uh, I've got to do, you know, all the trim. Okay, well, it's going to take as long as it takes and it ain't going anywhere, so I may as well do it. And I sit down and I force myself to do it. Sometimes, if you have a particular project, you might be able to watch or listen to an audiobook or something or read the novel of that particular faction might get you a bit more in the mood. It's a really tough one because it's sort of specific to the person. Gorgar was definitely not the first released Primark. Um, in fact, it was Angron, Fulgrim, Ferris, um, Horus, Mortarian, Vulcan, Gorgar. Um, so Gorgar and Mortarian were both done by Edgar Skoromowski. He now does a lot of freelance sculpting. Um, follow him on Facebook, really, really cool dude. Um, he also did Corferon, Kels Typhon, that kind of thing. And they were done at like the same time, basically. Um, then I think, I think Kurz was next. Then Perturabo, um, which was, no, it might have been Gilman then Perturabo, sorry. Yeah, that sounds right. Then it was Russ. Then uh, Magnus, Dawn, Alpharius, Sanguinius. And Cor no, sorry, Corex was just before Russ. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say that cold shoulder that Fulgrim would be their favorite if he didn't have a face look like someone was taking a leaf blower to it. Uh, you could get someone else's head, like maybe uh, Corax's would work really well on him, or possibly Sanguinius. Their heads might work better. Don't know. I would rust from all the salt if I was a robot. Not if I was made of titanium, or uh, nemetic poly alloy, or hyper alloy chassis. Come on, know your Terminator fluff, mate. Uh, you know, it's only steel that rusts from it. Other metals like aluminium form protective oxide layer, um, which protects them, obviously. It's in the name protective oxide layer from oxidization. That's why aluminium doesn't rust away or corrode away, to be more specific. Siege of Terror books are awful so far. Yes, they are. Um, the only writer I really care about who's still writing for GW is Chris Wright, because pretty much everything he writes is really good. 
Uh, John French, I've got a very low opinion of. Some people really like it, but I find that he just tries to do a lot of shock value stuff, and he has a way of just making the villains extra evil and mustache twirling to make his special characters look better in his books, which I find annoying. Uh, Aronsky Bowden, he has one book I really like, and that's Betrayer, and everything else I'm either find it mediocre or in the case of Master of Mankind shit uh, Master of Mankind I'm like it reads to me like a bunch of short stories that got smushed together into a larger narrative and it just doesn't work oh a super chat from Cold Shoulder crazy I'm not sure if I will have another chance to send you some Kanaka bucks I want to say I appreciate you and your videos. Keep up the amazing work and stay honest, because Warhammer needs more people like you. Well, thank you very much, Cold Shoulder. Um, for both the money, you didn't have to do that, and uh, for the words. The thing is, I think everyone who's watching right now should be able to go out and say what they feel. That's the biggest thing. I don't care if it's positive or negative. You can come on my channel and say you love 8th edition, and you love everything Games Workshop's doing, and... I may not agree with it, but I agree with your right to say it. And the reason the Outer Circle even exists is because we weren't allowed to say what was wrong with the game. So many moderators and so many forums just want to hear that everything's great. Uh, some pages you go to, you know, they don't want anything negative posted on them. They're like, oh, this is a hobby page. It's just here to talk about the great aspects of the hobby. It's like, well, where do you go if you want things to get better? Because you're starting to end up in this echo chamber, and I really feel the echo chamber has, um, you know, set in hard at Games Workshop sometimes. And they, they don't listen to us and what we want. But, you know, they're doing better. I definitely think that the um, current uh, administration there is so much better than the Kirby years. So much better than the Kirby years. Avoid Vlad Dracula. There is no latest Terminator movie. It ended at Terminator 2. Yeah. Um, so, fun fact, I'm a huge movie buff. Um, like, to the point of knowing a heap of director of photography backgrounds. Because I'm, you know, weird like that. And different composers and stuff. And when I look at the Terminator movies, I'm like, if I was going to do a Terminator movie, I would stop remaking the same fucking story of person is sent back through time to protect person from past person from future is sent back through time to kill person i hate that i would do something like the movie enemy at the gates uh that jude law thing where him and ed helms with not ed helms but he um oh, i totally forgot the actor's names but you'll know who i mean enemy at the gates they're the two snipers and they're having this um they're trying to outdo one another one's a german Soldier, the other one is Vasily Zaitsev, the famous Soviet soldier, and they're fighting in the ruins of Starware. I'd want something like that. Something where, like, a human resistance member uh, walking around in, like, the, all those crushed skulls is trying to outsmart a Terminator and make it back to his base or something with, like, some hidden intel or something like that. That would be a really fun Terminator movie set in that weird blue filter future war as opposed to what Terminator 4 did, which was Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, we will see a new Battlefleet game. I've been told, been told that it's been sculpted already by the guy who did the uh, Adeptus Titanicus stuff. But I hear that person also has since left the company, so I'm not exactly sure what the go is with it all. Um, but I would, I would be straight on BFG if they really release that, even at their exorbitant prices. Uh, a man can only take so much, because that game is fun as fuck. Cold shoulder. I'm just happy. Um, Graham McNeil, uh, one of my favorite Black Authy Black Library authors, is still writing for the Thousand Suns. There is a new Primark audio drama by him, but it hasn't been doing much lately. Yeah, it's a bit hit and miss. I don't like the whole Magnus being shattered into a um, hundred aspects approach. None of that really works well for me. Um, yeah, but you know, there's some fun stuff in there. Not gonna lie, uh, the best Primark novel is still the Perdurabo one. Um, 
Is it Guy Haley? James Swallow? No, I can't remember who wrote it, but that one's really good because it goes into Perturabo's upbringing on Olympia and how they fight the time altering Rudd, and it's really cool. I'm not gonna lie, it's really good. Sorry, I gotta keep up the fluids, guys. It's uh, been a hot day. Yeah, they did spoil Arnold Schwarzenegger being the good guy in the trailers because he did the come with me if you want to live and he's holding his hand to Sarah Connor in the um, asylum. Um, but if you take that part out of the trailers, then, you know, you could recut them in such a way that he's not the good guy. If I was actually a Terminator, which four-year-old GW writer designer would you exterminate first? Oh. Robin Kratos or Phil Kelly? Don't make me choose. Don't make me choose. What if the two are walking past one another and I fired this shot and both these people were theoretically killed at the same time by a cybernetic uh, organism made of salt? Yeah, tough choice. Shouldn't say nasty things like that on the internet, you know. The internet is a place where nobody ever trolls anyone or says mean things. You should know that. Um, but no, Phil Kelly has a horrible habit of only writing his factions that he really likes well. Basically just Tyranids and Eldar, at best Tyranids. Uh, whereas Kratos is the exact opposite, where he not only writes factions he doesn't like poorly, he does it pretty much deliberately badly, aka what he did with Tyranids. Um, but he does tread head stuff while he bikes Imperial Guard. <laughs> Cold Shoulder, Enemy at the Gates was a great movie and we do not speak of Thunderdome. I like Thunderdome. It's the weakest of the Mad Maxes. Um, I grew up in the area where the first Mad Max is filmed. I learned to drive on all those roads and highways and stuff and I've done some ludicrous speeds there when I was young, dumb and in a big V8 car. And pretty much all of it is now housing, believe it or not. Um, it's all urban. It's crazy. Mad Max 2, though, is still... That's that's just Broken Hill. That's just what it's like even today. Right down to the um, bikers in arseless chaps running around murder-fucking everything. Shadow Magnus kind of defeats any chance of redemption. But it's interesting there may be a part of him in the Grey Ice. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I like the idea of redemption, the Primarchs loathing themselves that fell to chaos. Um, some might you know, double down on it like a walker uh he's definitely doubling down on it but magnus and mortarian um those guys especially shouldn't be out there leading like chaos crusades across the imperium because they really aren't in the cause they hate everything they've become um, magnus wanted no pardons interest schemes for some reason that's become uh, a moot point Going into the end of 7th edition and 8th edition, Magnus decided all of a sudden that, no, he just wants revenge on the Space Bulls for something he accepted 10,000 years ago. Why? Because things had to happen. Voivode Vydrakwela. That name is hard to pronounce. I'm just going to call you VVD from now on. Uh, speaking of Battlefleet Gothic, do you think a rule set could be made to integrate into the Horus Heresy 40k ground armies? Uh, probably not. When you think of the amount of firepower, like, you know, a ship can theoretically exterminate a planet on its own with enough cyclonic torpedoes. I don't know how you'd be able to integrate that into the ground game. Um, I came up with my own game mode for campaigns where you could have the Zone Mortalis, and the Zone Mortalis takes place on a ship. And essentially, uh, there's two maps, one of each ship, and the ships are engaging in a boarding action as they sort of circle each other in the void. Think the movie Master and Commander, the end of the film, when they have the boarding action um, against the French ship, the Asheron. Same sort of concept. Uh, and the Zone Mortales games take place in different sections of the ship, like the landing decks, the ordnance decks, um, the engineerium, the bridge, that kind of thing. And as you knocked out a system, um, it had an effect on the game. So it's like, you know, if you controlled the guns, for example, you could do a bombardment on the other Zone Mortalis table because it counted as you shooting the other ship. Um, that kind of thing. It was this whole campaign system I came up with. It's only like a three-page long document. Um, I'll put it up somewhere for people to read sometime. 
So for Bear, surprised we haven't heard anything of Horus Heresy Primark releases for a while. Uh, we'll see Lion in probably March, something like that, I think. Depends when they release Book 9, but he'll be next. I think Khan will probably be the last. It'd be very weird for them to do uh, the Thramus Crusade and the Dark Angels and just not release their Primark, but just release some other dude. <laughs> uh, even if that dude is the guy who holds the high score for Raven Pillage. Brock, as an author, I do enjoy ADB's books for the most part. Yeah, I don't hate them, uh, apart from Master of Mankind, because it just feels... It's called Master of Mankind, and 95% of the book has nothing to do with the Emperor. It's just Custodes and Sisters fighting a meaningless battle in the webway, which I found it very hard to engage with. Um, and he does have a habit of Mary suing a lot of his characters, which, for better or worse, is just the way it is. But um, I definitely don't hate the guy, so there's that. Uh, Cold, sh oh, sorry, Jago Civitarian, out of all the Goriana class flagships from 30k, which do I like the most? Oh, um, there's a lot of cool ones, like, obviously my chapters and legions I like, like, I like the uh, Swordstorm from the uh, the White Scars, just because of the whole thing that happens at the end of Path of Heaven. Um, the Raven Guard flagship, probably, because it's got these weird, like, cloak generators, which are really cool. Uh, apart from that, all the others are kind of just more of the same. But yeah, the Raven Guard one is, like, a stealth ship, which, I don't know, it's kind of neat. Cold Shoulder, do you think after the last Horus Heresy book from Forge Hill, they'll do a Siege of Terror series and change those rules to 8th edition, but keep promise? Um, no, I think they'll... I don't know what they'll do. If they're smart, they'll bring out an Emperor model and it's like a Siege of Terror book or three, probably do it over three, and then just leave the rest up to us. But I, I foresee book 10 being another campaign book some lazy publication like book six was yeah horrible to say right uh i shogun any ideas on how to encourage the use of indominus terminators i was thinking small price drop or free teleporting are you referring to 40k 8th edition or to horus heresy because you can use indominus in heresy will driver i don't like gavthorpe I think he fanboys Dark Angels way too. I don't like Gav Thorpe's work too much either. Um, I really like Deliverance Lost. That's a really good book. But his Dark Angels books are very bizarrely written. It's like, where are you going with this? Why are you doing it this way? Um, and, and so many other things I could say to the same point. Film Monk Productions just joined. Good for you. Should I give up on Horus Heresy and move to printing out my own 3D models? Hey, if you want to 3D print models for Horus Heresy, go for gold. No one's going to tell you you can't. Alex of the Eternal Crusade. So is the Jagged Icon Mini going to have the option for foot and non-bike? Uh, yes, I probably think two different miniatures. I don't think they'll sell them as one miniature. They might make a bundle of it, which will be no cheaper than buying them individually. Um... But I think they'll put them as two separate miniatures. There won't be a way of putting the Khan off foot onto his bike. Not unless they put the bike on the display base or something and have him slot into the display base when you want to count as using the bike. I don't know. I think that would not look great. Hunting Freeman. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't give Jagged High a physical bike model. They never gave the Corsaro his. No, but that's because the people writing the game don't understand the background. There are a lot of people who work for the company who've never picked up or played the game in their lives. It's just a job to them. Graphics design students, that kind of thing, that are straight out of university. And this is just the job that they applied for and got. Muzz, what do you think? How long will we have Horus Heresy and when will they kill it? Uh, we'll have it for a while. We'll have it for a while. I don't know how much input they're going to have, how much they're going to add to the game over time. Uh, they seem like they're in a very bare minimum effort uh, deal at the moment, which I hope turns around, but I don't have a huge faith in because I know what the higher-ups are like in middle management. 
So if we actually start correcting unit Dark Fury's last night from our rooms, yeah, they're, they're both good units. Um, Dark Fury's there, you got to be very smart with how you use them. Uh, don't walk into the wrong suburb. Something like a box drape with an Inferno Cannon is the wrong suburb, for the record. Board Prince, hello man. Hey dude, how's it going? My god, it streams now. Yes, and we also established Iron Machine. Thanks for joining. Uh, why no Dark Mech in Book 9? Well, Book 9 ran out of space. Uh, no, sorry. Book 8 ran out of space. I think they are going to be in Book 9. Greg Burgess, I wish someone better would write Dark Angels books, hey? Yeah, you and me both. Uh, I think they're a legion that would probably be one of the easier ones to write, funny enough. Um, because essentially, you're just taking all the traits of normal legion and you're making them more secretive. And then you've got this just kick-ass set of dudes who are like feudal knights who would probably have honour duels and settle grudges with fistfights. That'd be a really cool dynamic, you know, people with a lot of honour, that kind of thing. Oh well, we can dream. Uh, soup visual, was Matt Ward misunderstood? Do you want me to talk about Matt Ward? Hmm. Matt Ward was very good at doing internal balance. You could pick up one of his codexes and go, every unit to some degree in this is viable and I will have fun playing with them all. And that is something I really miss. Um, that is not something I can say about pretty much any other writer since. The problem with Matt Ward was his fluff. The background stories he'd write were generally bad. Things like Mortarion getting his uh, name of Drago's, Drago carving his predecessor's name into Mortarion's heart. Sorry. That kind of thing was really bad. <laughs> Obviously his work with like Necrons and Blood Angels and that kind of stuff in um, 5th edition was like, the poor guy got death threats. That's horrible. If I actually, the critical bastard that I am, if I had the chance to sit down with one of these writers, I'd be really polite to them, just ask them their thought process and what they were thinking at the time. Um, yeah. The poor guy just, he couldn't write books where things were viable against other armies. They had to just be better which was the downside. But if you pick up, say, his 5th edition Grey Knights, or his 5th edition Necrons, Blood Angels, whatever, you would play with anything in them and go, this is great, I enjoy this army. And it's not like other forces, like the Tyranids at the same time, for example, which were one of Phil Kelly's creations, I think, where it was like, oh, the Pyrovore, what a fucking great unit, can't wait to use that. Um... Uh, Iron Shogun. Indominus in Heresy. Uh, yeah, there is no reason to take it over the other patterns because the other patterns are better. Points drop? Mm, well, no, because then you've got to... You'd have to add points to the unit for taking the other armors, which would be Tartarus and that. Uh, if anything, I'd say maybe if someone's taking Indominus, give them the option of taking something like a Stormbolter, even though it really technically hasn't been invented yet. You could probably find some workaround to that. Or like, you know, prototype Stormbolter. Something like that um, would be a great way of maybe implementing uh, Indominus in Heresy. The Border Prince. I didn't mind the first Dark Angels book, but it's the same with The Last Chances. Uh, starts okay, or is it by the second, third books? The first Dark Angels book is weird because it's got nothing to do with the Dark Angels. It's just some dude who turns out to be a psychic who ends up joining a Brotherhood of Knights and killing a basically a chimera, but it's called a Lion of Caliban uh, in the forests of Caliban. And Lionel Johnson kind of respects the guy, and he foils an assassination attempt on the Emperor, and then he becomes a Dark Angel. That's the book. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> book two is him and Luther out with an expeditionary fleet, and Luther's questioning his role in the universe, and, you know, it would have been the greatest man of his time, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the Lion happened... And they end up being sent back to Caliban as a punishment for letting an assassination attempt take place against the Lion. Um, and then they fight a psychic entity in the crust of Caliban. And then the third book is 50-50, some dudes on Caliban having some debates about stuff. It's a bit confusing how it's all written. 
and the other half is the fun half, which is where the lion is trying to fuck around um, with Kurz and capture Kurz. Uh, as a series, it's all over the shop. So, <laughs> yeah. Film on Productions. Thank you. As an Australian, I was looking at the price of my armies and seeing cheaper, but if I go down 3D printing part... Yeah, go for it, man. I'm all for 3D printing. Uh, is it any different to people who sculpt models out of green stuff or use sprues to make their Necrons or use pasta to make their, their Sench models? I mean, if you can accept one, you've got to accept them all type thing. At least if you 3D print them, they'll look like the right thing, even if they do have some heavy striations or a loss of detail. But do remember, all the models at Forge World and Games Workshop are 3D printed. That's how they make their masters now. They just use a really fine quality resin 3D printer. You can even see the little striation lines on them. Um, it's really pronounced on like Derradeos and um, some of the newer Dreadnoughts and vehicles. Morgan H, which blade is best big tonk? I don't know the context of the question, Morgan H. Will Driver, what Chaos Legion did you originally play? Thousand Sons. Started in the 90s with some white metal Rubik Marines. Uh, then converted up a bunch of corn berserkers into Thousand Sons by green stuffing the gap between the bunny ears on them. Uh, and it was terrible. I saw someone else do it and it wasn't good when they did it. But I was young and thought it looked good when they did it. So I did it myself and it looked terrible. Don't do it that way. <laughs> and is the best rider they have. Uh, he's pretty good. He's pretty good, but I still think Chris Raid is better. Alex the Eternal Crusade. What Legion specific units are still missing from the model range? Uh, no Iron Havocs for Iron Warriors. Um, Alpha Legion just got their Lanyard Terminators in the last year. It's Base Lords have got all their stuff. So I've got to sort of talk myself through this as I go. Oh, they obviously don't have Atramenta for Night Wars because they haven't just made it a thing. And the Terror Squads are really hard to make now because they've moved all the torsos and that the last chance to buy that you use to make the Terror Squads. So that doesn't help much. Um, most of the stuff's there, believe it or not. It's mostly the characters that are missing. Uh, they're working off a make-your-own-characters assumption. Alex P. I'm gonna, oh, yeah, sorry. Did that question already. Dark Dragon, my opinion, unique rules are good so long as they're in small numbers and on unique units. Example, Elder, rules of Aspect Warrior of Banshees, Banshee Mask. Um, yeah, Banshee Mask, you just have something like Always Strikes with a special rule. That's a USR right there. Banshee Mask would say, Banshee Mask confers the always strike first special rule. It's, you know, something like that. Um, you know, or it could have some other penalty associated with it, but you can have a named thing, you know, and then have a special rule attached to it. Uh, Rob749, they translate everything cool about Dark Angels and gave it to Black Templars. Yeah, basically. But then they sort of wrote Black Templars almost out of the 40k story. Uh, they were fucking huge back in 3rd edition. Probably because they were in the starter set with uh, really spiky Dark Elder. Board Prince, Josh Reynolds, Chris Ray, Guy Haley are my new top three. Avenue's consistently good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm... Guy Haley has his ups and downs. But I'm with you pretty much. I'm with you. Right? ADB Reynolds from Will Driver. Nah, ADB. Like... For me, personally, no. He's got one really good book, Betrayer. The rest are mediocre, and Master of Mankind is bad. Border Prince. My dude, did you read the great work yet? It's terrible, it made me quite cool. I feel dirty. Uh, no, I haven't read it, sorry. So, the problem with cool is he's been... Well, he's been retconned in, let's face it. Uh, being forced into the story, trying... You know, he's here in the background, why is he a thing... Um, where do you get all this knowledge from? There are better ways of doing it. Now they're just trying to put the square peg in the round hole, as it were. Um, the Family Guy episode, when they're referring to uh, man-on-man love and they have the train trying to get into the tunnel that's too small and it just forces it in. That's cool being pushed into 40k fluff.
Um, Matt Cat, do you think that 40k will be saved in ninth? I don't know what ninth will be, but I can tell you if they fix the things I spoke about in the video I did on 8th edition yesterday, then I think it will go a long way. The problem is right now that the things I didn't talk about too much, but I alluded to, things like placement, if you have characters which generate an aura effect, then that means everyone wants to be inside that aura effect, which means you end up with these big clusters of models in the middle of the table, clustered around their leaders, and these two blobs on each side of the table end up just smashing into each other, um, like a pillow fight in the middle of the table, both trying to get on top of each other with the various buffs they get from the auras of their commanders. And that's not great. Sigma does it a bit, yes, um, but it's a lot more selective as to what buffs apply to what units, which I like. So, yeah, maybe they fix that. Alex, the Eternal Crusade, wall wise, what is interesting with Storm Bolter and a Combi Bolter? A Combi Bolter is a twin linked bolt gun. Um, so it's two bolt guns that are firing in part together, but they're not putting anywhere near as many shots as a Storm Bolter, which is literally a gun with two shots being fired consistently by, I'm guessing, one gigantic bolt or reciprocal bolt system in the middle of it. Uh, so it unleashes an absolute hail of fire compared to the uh, combi bolter. And the combi bolter was something that, you know, like infantry could sometimes carry in heresy, whereas the storm bolter was for like terminators to clear out hallways and the assault cannon was an extension of that dialed up to 11. So for Bear, if you could change one thing about any Primarch model, what would it be? Well, I think people have said it. Fulgrim's face. <laughs> um, Jago Sevatarian, Dark Angels. It says they have a lot of early tech, including land raiders equipped with grav engines instead of treads. Do you think we'll see grav land raiders in 30k? I would like to. I would really, really like to. Um, if you took a land raider and you gave it a replacement track that sort of just... You know, replace the sides of a traditional land raider hull with some sort of grav thing and didn't give it a billion guns like a Primaris thing, I think it would be fantastic. Um, speaking of Dark Angels, the best Dark Angels novel was in 30k was written by um, Aaron Dinsky Bowden, which is, I think, Savage Weapons, the Dark Angels versus Night Lords and Sigulsa. Um in the Framus Crusade with the Lion and Kurz having their fucking duel where Kurz is strangling the Lion with lightning horse through his fucking neck and Kurz Wayne buries his sword in Kurz's back. That's fucking great. Um, Aram Densky Bowden should be writing the Dark Angels instead of uh, Gav Thorpe. Mark Burton. The fine quality of the War Titans. Some of the plate areas have horrible striation included. Yeah, they do. Not gonna lie, they do. It's the one downside of 3D printing. Daniel Hawthorne, as Angron ascends to a demon prince before the end of heresy, do you think we get a model for that? They said they wanted to. When they spoke with Simon Egan and Alan Bly back in like the second or third Horus Heresy Open Day, like in 2012, that's how far back we're going, um, they said they want to continue and do demon Primarch sculpts at 412 for them all. John McGuffin, got to be a weird echo on your voice. Uh, probably because I'm moving around a little bit in this stinking hot study as I recline back in the chair or lean forward to look at the computer. I apologise for that. Arnie Freeman, have you ever made a video about Salamanders in Horus Heresy? Curious how effective a flame-based faction is. Um, I have. I've done the Getting Started in Horus Heresy for Salamanders, obviously. And I do mention them in the Zone Mortalis video. So a flame-based faction... Uh, so, so this is a good chance for people who are curious about different factions. If you want to chime in about your own faction, do so. Oh, Vulcan is unkillable. Because he halves the strength of weapons that hit him if they have the Volkite, Plasma, or Melter rules. Or a Flamer rules. Which means Plasma Guns go down to Strength 3 and he is Toughness 7. So Plasma Guns cannot hurt him. Uh, melter guns, I mean, hurt him on sixes to wound, and he's got a three up fucking involve save anyway. Uh, he's an absolute damn tank. And the rest of the army goes up by plus one strength. I mean, strength five regular flamers, strength six heavy flamers, strength six heavy flamers on vehicles, like dreadnoughts. 
is terrifying. And if you play Zone Mortalis, Flame is the most terrifying fucking weapon because you're packed into a tight, narrow corridor. Someone comes around the corner, and everything in that corridor dies. Uh, chem munitions from Death Guard, that kind of thing, absolutely brutal in that situation. And the Salamanders obviously pack the best stuff. And that's where something like the, uh, not the Fire Drakes, the other specialist unit of the Salamanders, which I'm just completely mental blanking on, um, that's where they come into their own, because they have these flamers that act as a flamer, or act as a melter gun with only a six inch range, which means they're devastating against dreadnoughts, terminators, and against um, regular infantry. They really come into their own in that situation. Uh, board prints. Yeah, man, I'd love to come on your stream sometime. I'm always down to talk with different people. I, I think it would be a lot of fun. Rob749 has the 3rd edition starter, still got his 2nd edition Chaos Codex. Yeah, I've still got the 3rd edition one floating around here. And I have the 4th edition Space Marine Codex, and the 5th or 6th edition one as well. I think I've got the 5th, 6th, and 4th Codexes all sitting behind me actually on the shelf. And I want to do a nostalgia trip where I look at all three and talk about how the chapter tactics have evolved. Because I think that would be a fun topic. Prop 749, we used to pronounce Gene Steelers, Jenna Steelers for some reason. That is weird. Then again, I say Zench all the time instead of Zinch, so um, pff, what would I know? Cold Shoulder, I've been really into Age of Sigma recently, and me and my friends don't know what rules GW would change or tweak to make Age of Sigma 3.0. Do you have any ideas how to change Age of Sigma, or should we just make new armies? I do think they need to change the way shooting works slightly. Um, the factions that are good at it are ridiculously good at it. The factions like, say, Nighthaunt, Magakin, basically any of Chaos, um, those that aren't good at it are just terrible at it. And it's almost like, why are you bringing, you know, any shooting at all? The exception might be something like... Uh, the Ossiarch, the Ossiarch have the catapult of bullshitterness. That thing is just brutal. It's so strong that, okay, taking just one of that shooting item along is a game changer if you use it smart. Whereas um, for a lot of other armies, you take your shooting item, it's just some pathetic thing with like a six inch range, and you know, you're know you basically getting into charge range and you're gonna get kicked in the dick for trying to shoot. That's definitely something I could change, but that's less to do with the core mechanics of Age of Sigma and more to do with just the individual factions themselves. Uh, laughing Chi. I'm saying Chi, even though it's Ch. Uh, pyroclasts. Yes, pyroclasts. So I will go to the Salamander section right now because that's the top guy I am. Uh, no, I may not be a top guy. Um, yeah, so, remove the Lords of War part. Yes, Pyroclasts. So, Legion Fire Drake used to be in my list of, like, overpowered units in 30k, but the meta has moved so much in, like, the last seven years that they're just like, yeah, they're just, they're just guys. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, they're still really strong, but obviously... Yeah, okay, they've got Thunder Hammer, Storm Shields, two wounds each. If they're taking shooting from, like, bolt guns, that kind of thing, it's great, plasma guns. But if Strength 8 Fire, it, it completely carves the poor guys up. Because uh, you've only got to get those lucky ones or those lucky twos if it's an invol, you know, melter guns, power fists especially from other Terminators. You can have a five-man Terminator squad, uh, especially something like... Uh, Corn faction body world eaters, they charge in with rage. They're getting like four attacks on each Terminator with power fists. They're gonna hack down the fire drakes, even though the fire drakes are like three times the points. It's disgusting. Doom Driver, getting into 40k in the mid 90s, I didn't expect a third edition. Been begrudgingly buying extra editions, iron books and battle tomes since among models. Are you typing to buy every time? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh Again, part of why 8th is a bit frustrating is because everything got redone, and unlike Age of Sigma, where it was like, okay, here's the free rules for each faction, or like the War Scroll Builder type thing, it was like, here's indexes, here's codexes, here's chapter approved, and it's just so many books, so many books to keep track of. 
at least with Heresy, like, the, the black books are still fine. The older black books, okay, the rules are outdated in a couple of them, especially the uh, first four, because they're 6th edition books, or at least, the, sorry, the first three are 6th edition books, not 7th edition books. But overall, they still work, and unlike a codex, they've still got so much artwork and imagery in them and all this great background fluff that it's like, oh, I'm, I'm really happy just to own the book anyway. Um, and each book is its own unique content, whereas when you've got a codex, the next codex that comes out has the same fucking fluff regurgitated and a lot of old artwork from older codexes. The value and the perceived value, at least, is just not there. Uh, Bull Driver, most Chad 40k army. Primaris. <laughs> They're total Chad Marines. Come on. Uh, Hunter Freeman, how do you feel about the sort of cookie cutter models being pumped out for several factions in Age of Sigma, like the mounted HQ basically being the same model with different decorations? Uh, what do you mean? Are you mean like within the faction it's the same model with different decorations? Or. So if, if I go back to that Osiarch Bone the Reapers, this will test me out. I'm trying to back it because I think it'll be faster. Uh, whack the Arch Cavalos, that kind of thing. Now it's essentially just the same model um, the Liege Cavalos or the Arch Cavalos Santos, that kind of thing. Is that what you're getting at? It's just got like a slightly different way you can build the same model. Jago Civitarian Super Chat. Savage Weapons is one of my top short stories, and thanks for your advice last year. Helped me become more competitive at LDO. Oh, I'm glad I could help, dude, and thanks very much for the Super Chat. Always appreciate that stuff. Daniel Gunter. What did I think about the first Siege of Terror book? Uh, I got part way through it and decided I didn't like it when they started killing off White Scars. Uh, I don't like John French, so it doesn't help. Border Prince, Warhammer War. Most chat is flesh terrors. I'll find you and fight you if you disagree, Seth. Hey, Seth has accepted Primaris love, so Primaris have flesh terrors. Uh, sorry, flesh terrors have Primaris, therefore, you know, they're double chad now. Uh, Munching on chips. Hey, TSC. Was wondering if you own any Titans, and if not, do you ever plan on getting any? I had a Titan maniple I made for Epic, which I ended up giving away to uh, Patreon, to Patreon subscribers. Um, I don't do many giveaways on Patreon anymore. There's a reason why. Um, I don't. But um, they were obviously epic scale, not 40k scaled. I haven't got any 40k scaled ones. The biggest thing I've got at the moment is a Mastodon. Uh, I don't intend on getting bigger because, well, Thunderhawks and Storm Eagles are too much of a pain in the dick to put on the table, transport, you name it. Too much of a pain in the ass to use in a game. Even if they were good, Tines are the same thing. And you need so many points before you can use the things that it's just not worth it. If I want to use that kind of thing, I'll play Epic. I probably would enjoy painting one, but I say that as someone who hasn't had to paint something that big in a long time, and I think if I got into it, I'd get about a third of the way into the model and go, I'm over the fun of painting it now, um, and I can't be fucked with the rest of the project, and so it would be annoying to do the rest of it. Busty Boots. How many tactical marines would one need for a Horus Heresy force? I don't know. How big is your Horus Heresy force going to be? If it's a thousand points, you probably won't need more than 20 uh, in two squads of 10. If you're going to play something like 3,000 points, you're probably going to want 15 to 20 of them. But again, it's also Legion specific. If you play Raven Guard or Blood Angels, maybe Night Wards, you might get away with Jump Infantry if I'm White Scars. Oh, look, I am White Scars. Uh, I have a lot of bikes because I don't need the infantry, because I'm taking rights of war that unlock other stuff. Um, you might need to use breaches or something if you're going to play Stone Gauntlet, like Imperial Fists. Some armies might use Pride of the Legion. Sons of Horus are a good Pride of the Legion army. 
where you take Terminators as your troops. Jelly Balls, Space Sharks. Ah, uh, the Carcaridons. Mm. No, they're not Chads. They're Goths, if anything, because they are Raven Guard descendants mixed in with some Night Lord. Um, apparently, they were a Black Shields force that ran around the Heresy. Discord Horus Heresy server. Uh, yeah, we do have a Discord server. Uh, DCP basically runs it for us. Um, him and Cat are on there all the time. Border Prince, most of the win. Uh, I don't know for the win. I really do like the 30, and everyone says this when they look at what my Primark models are like, the local GW. They look at Gilliman, they're like, man, I wish they had that Roman aesthetic more. And it's like, yeah, that was a really good look. The Horus Heresy Ultramarines look really, really nice with that whole Greco Roman vibe. Um, as opposed to just bland power armor. Rob749, I like the indexes, indices. They should just release those, and if they need to update, update the whole lot. Yeah, yeah, probably not a bad idea. Uh, I point, I pointed out on the nostalgia trip I did with the third edition rulebook that the rulebook had um, all the different army lists in it. Yeah, that would obviously be really hard to do now um, to fit into the rulebook because the factions are so big and sprawling, you couldn't just fit it all and jam it all into the one book. Hunty Freeman, yeah, they have the same pose and structure as the Stormcast and Chaos Variants, it's just different skin on top. Yeah, I think they found the pose that works is more what it is. Uh, so they take the same wire framework and go, we know this pose is going to look good regardless. You know, focus groups or whatever. Studies have shown that all cavalry commanders should be posed with, you know, one leg up on their horse, facing off to the side or something. And they, they kind of did the same thing with... Um, the Horus Heresy with the Primarchs, like Perturabo and Horus are the same model, basically. Um, there's a few of them that sort of double up the same pose. Dark Dragon, Space Marine, 4 to 6 Ed Steel of the best unity of Chaos Codex, Space Marines, 8th Ed Steel of a Hover Tank. I'm with you there. So Space Marines in 4th to 6th edition got all the best ideas of Chaos. Um, and now, um, and it was given to Marines. So things like Obliterators and Mutilators became combat and ranged Centurions, for example. I'm with you. Yes. In short, yes. So the idea of Original Chaos was Chaos had less varied units than Marines. So they didn't get Vindicators, they didn't get Whirlwinds, they didn't get Razorbacks. They instead got, um, and they didn't have Assault Terminators, sorry. Instead, they got things like demons. And the demons were a essential part of the core book, not a separate allied army, but the core book, because they made up for the shortfall in one thing. You can't just have Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines be the same thing that Chaos Space Marines just have less of the stuff. That's a shit way to balance. So the people that wrote the books back then were smart enough to know that you needed to add the balance in by having things like demons. So the idea of greater demons, demon princes, and lesser demons was they supplemented your forces either by giving you cheap disposable infantry or some really badass monstrous creature. And things like your Chosen had access to a lot of power weapons and such back in a time when power weapons were on like Incubi and that's about it. And maybe some of the Aspect Warriors. And by 4th and really by 5th edition especially, what happened with Space Marines, they had whole units of special weapons like, you know, Vanguard veterans, Stern Guard veterans, that kind of thing. Um, and everything that the other factions did better, they lost because it was partitioned out, like demons became their own codex, and for a while there you couldn't ally them in, and all sorts of problems. Ozchuk, those Ossiarch models look amazing. I actually do quite like them myself. Uh, it's interesting to see that the engineer from Prometheus um, is cut across the Mortark of the Necropolis now. That's the thing, I guess. Um, I'm not sure that I like the derpy faces on the basic infantry. They've got like, this weird smiling bone face on these bone crons, or these uh, bone cast eternals. But yeah, overall, I think they're really nice looking models. 
the whole shields and the colors they've used like they really do embody the nagash stylings that was brought in on like the new nagash and the arkhan the black and the mortarks at the end of uh eighth edition fantasy the warhammer end times they really do look the part um but the faces ugh, the faces but you'll hear the ones that are on screen right now and the sergeant lead the unit leader with that skull that he has if that shit was on the whole unit that would be primo that's like some prime stuff right there way better than the derpy skelly faces that are all smiling and grinning at you because he was like the uh dead atlanteans off the codan the barbarian uh 1984 no two sorry john millius film with schwarzenegger Morgan H, what I meant was, can and should I take a Bane Blade for my Space Marine army? If so, which Legion chapter would benefit from it the most? I really don't know. Are uh, you taking it for 40k 8th edition? Uh, you won't be taking it for 30k, because I'm pretty sure you can't take a Bane Blade in a 30k Marine army. Uh, if you're using it for 40k, uh, there's probably better units out there. Rob749, do you play Horus Heresy Legions on Android or Steam? No, I don't play uh, those games. Goes to triple six. Always take a bean blade. Be sure there are no blood ravens around. The blood ravens. Morgan H, ask your friend because my friendly little game is still around. Land raiders on desperate find justification getting a bean blade to replace it. Yeah, it won't work. They're different units completely. Board Prince Warhammer War. Did you listen to the Dwellers Below podcast back in the day? I asked as they were your coin, your kinsman. No, I didn't actually. Um, I was away a lot back in the day um, when I was still in the military from like 07 through to 13, something like that. Um, I was just away constantly. So I didn't really have a stable internet connection. If I did, it was just one of those little like pay. Uh, USB modems that you like pay 20 bucks at credit a month or whatever, like a pathetic teenager. Um, but when I was home, I was usually like binge drinking or something stupid with the boys. Super heavy tank can be taken as a lot of war. In Heresy, it can, goes to triple six, um, but not in a marine army because the Bane Blade has rules in the Solar Auxilia and the Imperial Militia. And not in the Space Marine rules. It can't be taken in the Space Marines. Griff Burgers, I bought Dwellers Dice when they dropped. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Busty Boost, in regards to Primaris, what aspects of them would you change if you had the official chance to? Are we talking sculpt or war? Because I could change both things. Board Prince, I don't do Age of Sigma, so stop listening, but... Good dwellers are good lads. Huh, good to know. I don't know, maybe I'll check it out sometime. Kevin Hewn. Hewn. Apologise profusely if I mispronounced that. What do you think of Wordbearer's Demon Summoning? Uh, again, 30k or 40k. I need a little context here. Uh, cold Shoulder, any tips for running Thousand Suns for 30k? I'm going to run Magister Simon as the leader, but feel that running 10 combi players, Chain Fist, Sekhmet... Um, it's too many points, but it's what my roommate suggested. It depends. Do you want friends or not? Because that's a good way to lose them. Run 30k. That sounds, sounds like you would any other legion. legion. If, if you're not, not being competitive, competitive just for fun, a couple of tactical squads, magic system one, maybe some incest skull. Um, you'll have a lot of fun with them. Kenatide Blade Cold, for example, really fun unit. A lot of points, dies easily, but if they make it into combat, it gets tasty. Tears of unfathomable sadness from your enemies, which obviously tastes absolutely delicious. Uh, no one's going to accuse you of being an OP, broken son of a bitch. But if you take a segment cabal with chain fists and plasma gunners, which are going to be taking probably divination cults and getting their rolls to hit level one if they don't move, stuff like that, people are going to kick you in the dick. And they'd be right to do so. Uh, Marching on ships, do you think Games Workshop could go fully digital with courtesies, rulebooks, 
certainly Sorry, Chopra Proof. No, I think it would be great to have a hardcover book. So the hardcover book should be like the Horse Heresy Black books. You're going to charge over $100 for a book Australian, or near enough to. Um, it should be full of like extra artwork and bonus content. You know, something for the collectors to actually keep and put on the shelf and go back to and read in the future and go, man, this is a lot of fun. Otherwise, it should be a really thin, cut-down paperback, like the old codexes were back in third edition, where it was basically the bare minimum essentials of what you need to know about the army. Anything more than that is just a waste of space. Otherwise, put it on a PDF. Um, uh, Bussy Boot War. Okay, so... Uh, echo, 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 echo. Hmm. I think I'm echoing. Fix audio, please. I can't fix it if I don't know what's wrong with it because I haven't changed any settings. Strange. Um, has the echo left now, guys, or is it still there? Uh, the War for Primaris. What would I change with the War for Primaris? Do do I have to keep them as Primaris, or can I just make them normal Space Marines? Uh, if I have to keep them as Primaris, I would say they're actually refined Thunder Warriors, and that they actually have a limited lifespan, and that essentially by choosing to become a Primaris Marine, you're entering a death sentence, that down the line you will die. Maybe a Space Marine is functionally immortal, well, Primaris isn't. I don't know, something like that would be a way of balancing it. The old Marines still have their place. Still there, still there, still there. Great. I don't know why it's echoing all of a sudden, guys. I really apologize for that. Uh, maybe not more Boomer than you, but uh, all Border Prince. What you're seeing on your screen right now, guys, is exactly what I'm seeing on my screen. So I haven't touched any audio settings or modified anything. It's probably just something to do with the bandwidth. Um, I'm T-panning or something, uploading the data for the stream. Yeah, streaming will be able to help out. I'm going to try that right now. Okay. We're a 30k demon summoning. Um, in 30k, yeah, they're fine. It's hard that you're not summoning from the real song list, so. Mihaly Orosovsky. Now, I, again, apologize if I mispronounced that. Built a double beam and contemptor. Any tips on how to best use it? I'm pretty sure you can't do that. I don't think a Mortis Contender has the options with a Double Beamer in 30k. Daniel Link, what are some of your favourite models from armies that you don't play that you own or want to buy? I really like the Sylvaneth faction from Age of Sigma, or the, um, I think it's Sylvaneth. The tree people with the uh, Alarial on the bug, that kind of thing. Yeah, I really like that army. Plug my mic back in. On it. Am on. I tried plugging in the mic again. Hopefully that works. Still going through the chats. Yeah, I have OBS uh, streaming. That's in the background right now, actually. If I pull it down, look at that. There's my OBS going. So, it's definitely a thing I have. But again, I'm not super familiar with this because I've never done it before, guys. I'm no expert. I should have watched some six-year-old kid who knows technology better do a tutorial first.
Daniel Gunther, did I end up painting all them hate miniatures? No, I have nowhere near finished painting them all. Um, they're in my hobby later pile. <laughs> There's a lot of skin to be painted. Uh, and painting um, essentially 100, sorry, 200 Chaos Marauders is a lot more skin and fur than I can be fucked painting in the short term. Uh, Fry McGlizzy. Favourite model, probably already got this question. Oh, favourite model in general. I really like... Uh, he's probably not going to like it. I like the Age of Sigma Nighthorn. Both Lady Alinda and Curtis Valentian. Both those models I have loved painting. There is no part on those models. I was like, oh, this sucks. I don't like this. They were both so much fun. And it's like, I enjoy the Primarchs a lot. And it's a cool collection that I've got them all, but... Yeah, I'd say probably Lady Alinda and Curse Flinch. I've just got this weird ghost thing. Uh, Chain for Survival option in 30k, asks Niles Lacour. Uh, yes, they're very viable. Uh, you probably don't want them on every model, but a couple in a unit is really good because a lot of vehicles have armored ceramite, so you won't be able to use things like melter guns against them. Uh, but if you can get chain fists into things like Leviathan Dreadnoughts, they go down to chain fists. They go to just two in a unit of 10 termades will take down a Leviathan. It may take a couple of turns, but they will definitely do it. And you'll be so happy you bought the chain fists so long if you get into that situation. Oh, the echo's gone. I'm very glad, guys. Uh, very glad. This is what happens when you get to my age of, what, 31? You know, the, the gramophone over in the corner and all that. It's, it's hard. It's hard. So, opinions on the Ossiarch. Uh, I was giving them earlier, and they're too strong. The Mortec Crawler ammunition is brutal. Uh, one can instantly kill characters if it rolls higher than their wounds, one of its ammo types. Uh, it has another ammo type that wins against Courage, or Bravery, I should say. So you fire into something like a unit of Goblins, or a unit of like Skaven, Clan Rats, and it's just gonna shred them, because it wounds every single model on their Courage value, so it's just equal their Courage or beat it or something ridiculous, so it's like 3 pluses to kill a Goblin, you got a unit of 30 Goblins, yeah, that's 30 hits, and on 3 plus they die. It's ridiculously strong. Um, I'd probably just increase the points on the basic Mortec Guard, and I would have the option to make Catacross the Mortark and the Necropolis, the big guy who looks like the engineer from Prometheus, his own model on a 40 or 50 mil base. Maybe in the 60 mil base, because he's sort of the size of a demon prince. I would make that a thing. Um, so you could use the model in smaller games, and he obviously wouldn't be anywhere near as beefcake as he is when he's on the full dais with all his generals. Um, but you've got this beautiful centerpiece model and you won't get to use it in every game, which is a damn shame. Water Prince Warhammer War. I'm a professional YouTuber, I know things. Well, just like Tyrion, I drink and I know things, but they're mostly things about engineering and planes and firearms and stuff like that that not everyone's interested in. It comes from a professional career in engineering. Uh, Miheli Orosovsky. Sorry, I should clarify. 40k. I haven't had a friend who likes to play with an army of five knights. I thought if I took a beamer and a culverin together, would that be viable in 30k? Yeah, I think it would be more viable to have two culverins. One conversion beamer on its own, which is not enough. And once the fight devolves into a close range thing, then the conversion beamer is going to be nowhere near as good. Busty Boost, Border Prince, Warhammer War, you need to get banned on one social forum to be considered professional. Well, in that case, I'm very professional. Also, how's the prior superior fist going, you damned casual? Yeah, how are they going, Border Prince? Havoc, I thought you were 33. Nope, 31. The boy, 88. The Martial Lord of Loyalty, have you seen the new Zinch releases on Warhammer Community yet? Yeah, yes, we were talking about them earlier on uh, on the channel, and I don't think it's too great. I don't think it's terrible either. 
I just don't think I'd be going out of my way to buy it if I was getting into a Zench Force. Uh, I'd probably just go and buy a Zinch start collecting box. It's probably going to be better value to me because it's got more useful stuff in it. Cold Shoulder, Ossiarch have one build that is too strong and that's the Petrofex Elite. The army is much less busted outside that sub-faction. The catapult is 200 points and it's scary ammo is at least only once. The, well, the basic ammo on it is still three shots, which will hit on twos because you're going to spend one of those not command points on it or have it cut across around. You know you're going to. It's going to be like hitting on twos, winning on like threes, and each one is five damage. That's pretty strong for something that's 200 points. Uh, to give you an idea, Kurdos Valentian is the same points, or just under that from um, the Night Haunt. The bloody I'm losing my mind here. The uh, what do you call it? The giant ghost thing for Night Haunt. The Forge World one, Mongol. Mongol. Oh fuck me. That's th nearly three hundred points. That's like two hundred eighty points. And that's way less effective than the Mortec Crawler is currently. Uh, if you take the Mortec Crawler in the Battalion, though, it's terrifying. Because you get two of them and a character that makes them better. And you just shield wall them with Mortec Guard and go to town with the Catapults. It's disgustingly strong. Uh, yeah, the Petrofex Elite is really strong, not going to lie. But why would anyone else take any of the other factions? Again, they've made a situation where just one is better. Busty Boost is the made-to-order armies of Vengeance worth the 230 bucks for the Chaos and Dark Angels, disregarding competitive standing for Tacticals and Terminators. Well, if you want the models, it's worth it. Uh, depends what you want out of it. The Chaos Chosen that come in it are really nice models. Uh, they're a, a very small model by the standards of the new Chaos Space Marines, but they still look really nice. Um... The Terminators, again, look very nice. They're slightly different to the ones you get because they're a easy build, snap fit type deal. Uh, so they're very different to the actual Dark Angels Terminators and allows you to add a bit more variety to your existing Terminators. If you're into the models, you'll enjoy the box. Um, the Ravenwing in it, they're easy to build. The Tacticals, they're fine. The characters are cool. There's a lot of cool characters in the set. Yeah. Munch on chips, do you plan on doing any more army showcase reviews like you do with 30k, Thousand Suns, and Noble Demons? I am. I almost went with the choice of my Lord of the Rings collection the other day, and instead went with the Magakin in the end. Um, it was a toss-up, which I did the video on, and why? The Numenor collection, I've got a bunch of Numenor minis, and a heap of rare white medals, I've got all like, the names, ring rates and stuff, and for a while a lot of it was out of production, but apparently it's all made to order now so yeah that's a thing um yeah i will and i'd like to do more showcasing my white scars as well coming up uh to active heresy in canberra havoc asks how's BattleTech going are you planning to get into it i heard the most kickstarter backers per city came from sydney and melbourne i'm not in melbourne i'm about an hour out of melbourne in the countryside in a town called ballarat and I did get the Kickstarter. Um, I was chatting with Ryan and there was a little bit of miscommunication so I didn't get exactly the parts of the pledge that probably would have best suited me because I do want to play a bit of uh, Comstar in it. So I just think the idea of the uh, company um, that owns all the telecommunications being this corrupt entity is too hilarious not to play. Uh, Cold Shoulder. Thing is, I have to choose between a Gothazar for my Crematorians or a Crawler. I don't play Broken Armies. I try to, at least. Uh, HCM is meant to be more laid back, in my honest opinion, and fun. It shouldn't be whack. Yeah, it shouldn't be whack. Uh, again, you don't have to use those orders every turn. That makes your ship ridiculously strong in Osiarch. Um, the Gothazar Harvester is pretty good, not gonna lie. Um... Two of those for your dollar is only a little bit more expensive than one more tech crawler, and you'll probably get more use out of it overall in more of your games. So I guess I would lean that way. Plus, it's got some fun little things going on with the kit. 
Daniel Link, if 40k 9th edition is supposed to be dropped next summer at Adepticon, do you expect to see a heresy making the jump on to the new format, hence the slow turnaround for the past while? Uh, it would piss too many heresy players off that they've gone out and bought all these 7th edition books and a 7th edition rule book, only to have it flipped around on them. Uh, because Forge World thinks that maybe they'll possibly get more people into the game by changing the rule set. I think the opposite. I think the people who are already uh, enjoying and playing 40k don't want to go and buy another game, especially a game from Forge World that requires all those more expensive miniatures, um, just because it's got a different rule set. Either they're in it now, or they're never going to be in it. Just my opinion. Niles Lacour, if you follow down the Chaos specific markings, could you use the new Chaos Space Marines kit as a Night Lord's Terror Squad? They'd be big, um, and very, very spiky trimmed. The thing with the Night Lord's Terror Squad was, the Night Lord's Terror Squad looked like regular Space Marines, just covered in things like dangling bones and trophies and bits of human skin, and of course, a uh, lightning effect. Apart from that, though, you know, they would look like normal marines on parade. So, I don't think that having an eclectic mix of guys who some bolt guns have belts of chain ammunition, other bolt guns don't, some dudes just run around with bayonets, I don't think that would necessarily fit. I'm not saying don't try it. Cold shoulder, just to be clear, I have the unfortunate luck of owning head knives with Slanesh. Fire Slayers and Bone Reapers and bought all of them before their battle times came out. So I have all the armies people are in a coma in about. Hmm. Uh, I don't know much about the Fire Slayers at all. I've never seen them in action. I should really look into it because I do like the look of them. I do like the look of them. Um, I think they're too expensive for me to collect though. Sean Fisher heading to Ballarat next week. What's the Games Workshop like there? And is there any other good hobby shops? Uh, the Games Workshop here is great. I really like it uh, and the community there. It's not like most Games Workshops I've been to where I feel like they just want to violate my wallet. Um, yeah, uh, it's really good in there. I'm not going to complain about it. Really nice guys and the manager there is absolutely normal person to chat to, which is great. Doesn't feel like a social outcast like some of them do. Just a normal everyday person just doing a normal everyday job. Um, any other good hobby shops? Harper's Hobbies isn't bad uh, for like, different paints and supplies. Uh, same thing with Guff. Guff is a local shop which has like um, it does do table stop, table top stuff. Uh, it's right opposite the police station and court in town, so you get to see some interesting people out front sometimes. Um, but the shop itself's pretty clean. Uh, really well kept, doesn't smell too weird, which is always pros. Um, but it's whole downstairs section is just full of like board games and like Xboxes, PlayStations, computers. It's got a whole gaming area for like teenagers and socially awkward people to hang out in. And it's got an upstairs gaming area, but it's obviously where most of the magic, the gathering takes place. So, yeah. Rob749, I always thought you are a Queenslander, Macca. Or well, Ballarat, hi from Newcastle. Uh, I lived in Queensland. I was in Townsville for like three years, four years, something like that. Um, I've been to Brisbane a heap of times. I spent time in Gatton, Toowoomba, uh, Rockhampton, Cairns. So, yeah, I've been around. I want to go up to the Cape this year or next as well. Dad wants to go four-wheel driving up there. So, yeah, that'll be fun. I love four-wheel driving. Well, I'm going to guess that people are probably sick of my voice by now, so I should probably wind this stream up, we'll say in about oh, five minutes, call it uh, 20 to 11, my time. So if anyone's got any last questions, uh, get them in now, and I'll wind this and all my audio dramas and my boominess up, because um, I'm an old boomer who doesn't understand how to stream things. Apart from that, I'm just going to look at some of these weird models. The Mortis and Soul Mason. What's the deal with this uh, Baba Yaga dude? I mean, I know what he does in game, but um, yeah, it's just funny. He's like Baba Yaga meets uh, like Lord Croak or something. 
uh, Havoc asks, you can always change your pledge in the pledge manger at no extra cost. You can also purchase extra stars and lances and add ons through the two com star lances at wave two. Yeah, I could. I could. Like speed cape for pigs. Yeah, I look, I'm a fucking crack shot with my rifle and I would love to go pigging up there. The thing is I don't need a rifle or to be a crack shot to go pigging up there. Um, you just take a good pig and shotgun that kicks like a mule up there and you'll get something. Either uh, one of the local women <laughs> or a fucking normal bush pig. Uh, some of the people up there are really rough, men and women actually. It's only 6.30am. Yeah, it is for you. <laughs> uh, Munching on chips, do you plan on doing another basics of tanks video with some of the bigger tanks you own? I might. I'd like to do some Battlefleet themed stuff as well. Uh, Dr. Ono, what would you like to see come out with Book 9 aside from a Primarch? Uh, Atramenta for the Night Wards would be huge. Uh, also, if they rework the Night Wards and they modify Sevatar, it would be great to see him have a Artificer armor, because right now Sevatar only has a 3 plus armor save, which is hilariously bad for someone who has dual characters who are all running around with fucking Paracon blades. Uh, even the AP3 weapons like Lightning Claws become terrifyingly strong to him. Cold Shot, a Bone Throne Skeleton is my favorite model for Bone Reapers. Yeah, I, I really like him as well. I don't like the Mortis and Soul Reaper though. I don't know why, but I don't like that model. Probably because it's sort of the worst aspects of Nighthaunt meets the worst aspects of Ossiark. Yeah, go Civitarian. Are you going to be at the 30k event in camera at the end of January? Can't remember what it's called. Act of Heresy, and yes, I will be. Rick Burgess, I'm painting my Merkwood army at the moment for a tournament in a couple of weeks. I love this game. I love it too. Um, I haven't played the new edition of Lord of the Rings, though. Um, I guess that's on me. But I've been playing it since the Fellowship of the Ring. Hence why I have an army of white metal Numenorians with a white metal Elendil and a white metal Isildur, a white metal Isildur on horse, a white metal Elendil on her horse converted out of an Elendil and an Aragorn the King. Uh, and I've even converted up Numenor cavalry using the plastic Gondorian cavalry and the Numenorian men at arms, uh, the plastic ones. So a little bit obsessed, one could say. Um, I do have a bunch of Lord of the Rings stuff if I no longer want, and I'm thinking of either doing a giveaway or selling it. But the thing is, if I do a giveaway, I don't want to give it to someone who's just going to sell it. Um, specifically talking about maybe my Gondorian forces, which has a shitload of Gala Fountain Court with shields, a shitload of Citadel Guard, I think about 18 of them, 6 with spears, 12 with bows, about 12 Guard the Fountain Court, all the characters you can possibly think of. Um... And of course, with my uh, Mordor, it's all like the nine chosen versions of the uh, Ring Wraiths, like the Undying, the Tainted, and all that. I'd probably get rid of those. XP, I'm going for Scrub Bull soon. Some characters up that way for sure. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, people up that way are wild. It's um, for Americans, uh, your equivalent of West Virginia is definitely up in. Uh, the Cape up in far north Queensland. Uh, Daniel Link, Numenor is awesome. Fuck yeah, Numenor is awesome. Uh, if anything, they are completely underrated um, in the game compared to what they should be because uh, I know you can't go saying things like this on the internet, but they are actually the master race. Uh, out of men, they are the superior race because they've got that elven blood mixed in with them along with the blessings of the gods. So um, they had advanced to like, you know, they didn't use wooden bows, they actually used steel bows, like spring steel bows and shit like that. Um, and their navies had been all around the world. They were like Phoenicians meets Romans meets all sorts of things. It's really fascinating. Uh, will we see more of hate? Asks House Raven. Uh, yes, I will do more hate videos, but I can only do interesting videos when I have people to play against who want to play hate. Uh, Gonzalo Vincente. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce that. What do you suggest to get for a Thousand Sons Army? 40k for someone that's starting to get in the hobby. Uh, the Space Marines basically the rubric marines i don't think you'll get enough bang for your buck out of the terminators so you want the rubric marines 
Uh, and then you probably want to get Zangors. Um, they're not in a great place as a faction, either 40k or fantasy currently, the uh, Zench Forces. Zinch forces. Um, so I try and make up for it with uh, the lesser chaps. And Spiritual Liege for Boutte Gilliman will be the last question to answer tonight. Uh, probably been asked before, have you had a chance to try out the Song of Ice and Fire yet? Yes, I have. I've played several games with uh, Dom Fabry. Some of you may know him as, I think he's Fabricator General or something on Instagram. Um, we played a few games along with myself and some other people um, when we were over in America for Heresy Camp or Hobby Camp. And it was great. It's a really good game. And I highly suggest it because it's cheap, easy to buy into, and incredibly quick and easy to learn. Um, and when I think of streamlined game, that's a streamlined game. Uh, all right, guys. Cutting off the questions there. Got any other questions? You'll have the same for the next video because if I keep answering the next one that pops up, I'll be here all night. Um, but thanks very much for tuning into the stream. 